This is honestly pretty late. 2018 feels like it was a super long time ago already, but I know a lot of people wanted this and I still feel like talking about it. So these are my top 10 favorite songs of 2018. At number 10, and this should come as no surprise to anyone that watches my channel, we have Mac Miller with Come Back to Earth. At the time when it came out, I was already over the moon about how much I loved swimming, how personal and real it felt. I made a video about Mac's progression as an artist, I featured Come Back to Earth in my other favorite songs of the year list, and so on. And then, tragically, we lost Mac, and the song has taken on a whole new meaning in my brain and my heart. And as sad as it is to see him go, it's fitting that one of his last songs is so beautiful and spiritual. The lyrics are incredibly vulnerable, the instrumental is very peaceful, serene, and yeah, the song means a whole lot to me. At number 9, we have Frank Ocean with his heavenly, unique cover of Moon River. It's kind of funny. As a YouTuber that talks about music, I can partly judge how much I appreciated or loved something based on whether or not I made a video about it. And with Frank Ocean's Moon River, yes, I made a video about it. The video I made discussed the history of the song itself, and like I said, Frank's version was a cover, and he's nowhere near the first popular artist to do a cover of the song, but his version is one of the most unique. Knowing the context behind music can really make me feel it more, and knowing the other versions of the song and then hearing Frank's take on it is amazing to me. He loves using those pitch distorted vocals, he has some vocal tracks layered on top of one another, he changes some of the lyrics, and most importantly, we get his distinct, emotionally charged voice. Between all of these different ideas, there is just so much to love about this song. At number 8, we're going back to the indie hipster roots of this channel with Hippocampus and Bambi. This song is incredibly addictive for me, it's not even funny, and oddly enough I didn't really talk about this one in a public forum too much, but trust me, I had hundreds of plays of this song throughout 2018. It's this interesting little blend of a bunch of different things. It's relatively mellow, but it makes me want to get up and dance. The song sort of relaxes me, but I also want to scream the lyrics at the top of my lungs. It's a little paradoxical, if you will. The lead singer's delivery is very charming, the instrumental is super fun, there's this great buildup at the end of the song, and I highly recommend it. At number 7, we have Mitski with Nobody. This is so high quality, so easily one of the best songs of 2018, and it's because Mitski is, and this is no exaggeration, one of the best artists in the world. Again, the song is an example of things that you usually might not find working so well together. What sticks out to me are pretty bleak lyrics and a very fun sound. On paper, with the lyrics, we have themes of isolation, alienation, estrangement. There are phrases of global warming being mentioned, talking about not wanting any pity, but the sound of the song is so fun. It's something that could be a number one radio hit that everybody's dancing in the street to. Yeah, there is that little like OK Computer-esque outro, but besides that, it sounds like a very fun disco pop tune. Mitski is so singular. There's only one of her, it's so hard to compare her to anyone else, and she's incredible. Everybody should be streaming Be The Cowboy 24-7. At number six, we have Unknown Mortal Orchestra with their song Honey Bee. And so, if anything I ever say on this channel will ever be close to accurate, this next statement is the one that I'm banking on. This song sounds like, and feels like, say when you're traveling, you're on a plane, a train, any kind of automobile, and you have your headphones in, and you're looking out the window, and you feel like you're in some kind of indie movie, that's what this song is. This is what's playing in the background. I'm very dead set on that being the perfect explanation for this wonderful, perfect song, so no further explanation. At number 5, we have Car Seat Headrest with Bodies. Again, with the whole YouTube thing, Bodies is a song that I made an entire video about, and it ended up being one of the most personal, introspective things I've ever put on my channel. I went through a really difficult time earlier in the year, and around then, I really started listening to the remastered version of Twin Fantasy nonstop, and Bodies ended up becoming one of my favorite songs on the album and of the year, and so that song really helped me pick myself up in a really dark time. As I discuss in the video, Bodies, like a lot of other Car Seat Headrest songs, is pretty informal lyrics-wise. It's that sort of top of your mind, stream of consciousness sort of feel. And when you're really stressed out and you have a bunch of different things going in your head, I feel like that's what I connect to the most, at least. The song touches on youth, family, friends, love, and the song structure is really strange too, and overall it just means a lot to me. 
At number four, we have snail mail with pristine. Let's go down a list of some of the things that I've already mentioned. Did I make a video about this? Yes, I made a video about snail mail and how Lindsey Jordan is one of the best up and coming acts in indie rock. And does this song connect with me personally? Yes, it's an emo love song and most of those connect with me personally. And some other random thoughts about this song, out of the thousands of indie acts that I listened to last year, this song specifically has really stuck out to me. Something about her delivery is really memorable, the lyrics are very melodramatic and that's fun, and then I just know that she's gonna continue to do great things in the future. At number three, we have Brockhampton with San Marcos. And I'm not even gonna talk about me and making Brockhampton videos because that in itself is redundant. Iridescence was good. Uh, right when it came out, I knew it wasn't perfect, and over time, I have found a lot more discrepancies that I have with it, but not with San Marcos. This song is absolutely perfect to me. This is one of the best songs of the year, one of the best songs Brockhampton has ever made. It's deep, introspective, beautiful, and the list could go on. We get great verses from all the members that are on the track, specifically Joba sticks out to me, and Bareface has a great chorus, but still the most memorable part of this song, and the best little like subsection of any song last year for me was that huge chorus at the end singing, I want more out of life than this, I want more, I want more. It's the definition of beautiful, and if I remember anything from last year, that will be it. At number two, we have Kanye West with Ghost Town. Now this, on the other hand, is an album that I barely even like, and out of the seven songs on that project, I really only love two of them, but those two I absolutely adore. For me, Ye sounds really unfinished and sloppy at points, but this song featuring great performances from 070 Shake and Kid Cudi is absolutely perfect. And this kind of contradicts what I just said, but apparently this song came out the same day that 070 Shake uh, recorded her vocals, and that is absolutely stunning to me because her part is incredible. At first when I heard it, I didn't want to fall into the whole, oh, Kid Cudi's doing his humming thing, like that's the best thing in the world. But yeah, it kind of is. His chorus is booming and it reflects the themes of liberation and freedom that you get with the song so, so well. We get a good verse from Kanye, but the real standout performance here is that of 070 Shake. This verse, this outro launched her into stardom and again, it reflects the song well because it's about being free and about being reborn. And that is a good segue. Number one is Reborn by Kidsy Ghosts. There was never going to be any way around it. This was easily my favorite song of last year, and it has joined like the upper echelon of my favorite songs of all time. Kanye West and Kid Cudi have had an abundance of personal issues in their lives. Between drug abuse, relationship problems, dealing with their art, mental health, the list goes on and on and on. They have a lot to vent about. On this exquisite, beautiful song, they're both talking about how they're trying to better themselves and move forward, and the product is absolutely wonderful. Cuddy's performance is great, his chorus is what you would hope for and what you would expect. It's warm, charming, smooth, whatnot, but his verse is where things really start to drive things home. You can see how much effort and soul went into this project. With Kanye, it's the same sort of thing. We have more heart from him than we've seen in years and years. He's not phoning it in, this actually means something to him. Overall, this song is a 10 out of 10 to me, no question. It's absolutely perfect, and it's my favorite song from 2018. So that's it for me. Let me know what some of your favorite songs of the year were down below, what you're looking forward to this year. Thank you so much for watching my video, and I'll see you soon. Thank you.